what's up guys uh, welcome to the channel so far you have seen me doing some videos related to product management stuff so this is my first unboxing video and i don't know how it will go so let's give it a try and see so i have recently bought an lg ultra wide monitor 29 inch uh, why ultra wide because i have been doing the video editing stuff as well as some gaming so i thought this would definitely suffices all my needs this is definitely recommended by one of my friend but after doing some good research i was convinced that i should definitely go for this this monitor has been purchased from amazon and it took me just 3 days to get the delivery so i am very excited to unbox it and see what all goodies or not goodies what all accessories do we have it inside let's let's get started So before we do the unboxing let me quickly uh, share you what was my buying criteria and uh, any viewers who are currently watching this can use this guide for simply uh, buying their best monitor so uh, the first and foremost is the overall purpose uh, what's your overall purpose of buying the monitor is it just for gaming uh, video editing stuff or it's kind of for overall or working so we have to define what is your overall purpose i will also show what were my overall purpose but let's see what are the different factors or the criteria we should be focusing number 1 the budget monitor is such a kind that it can be uh, bought at uh, as less as 5000 and it can be as expensive as more than a lakh rupees so it's very important that you define your budget and what is the price point that you are willing to spend for a monitor number 2 is the panel type so nowadays there are various type of different panel types uh, there can be a separate video made what does each of this mean but to give you a very uh, quick gist here it what they mean so tn is twisted pneumatic panel which offers a high refresh rate and a fast response time making it the preferred choice for gaming tn panels have low contrast ratio and limited view angle but it's also affordable compared to other panel types va also known as vertical alignment panel has a great visual and view angle but a longer response time it's a good monitor for general entertainment usage and has a more flexible price option ips also known as in panel switching can be quite expensive but it will also offer you the best viewing angle and stunning rich colors It's a great for professionals and multimedia producers who desire true to color visual quality. Moving on to the third is the aspect ratio. So here comes the most important part. Uh, so the standard monitor has a normal aspect ratio of four ratio three or sixteen ratio nine. Aspect ratio is nothing but it's a ratio of the your height to width of the monitor. for aspect ratios of 21 ratio 9 and 32 ratio na it's more about the ultra wide monitors next is the screen size screen size is also determines the size of the monitor how it big it can be just like your televisions a uh, monitor also have various screen size and this are few of the standard screen size that present the most important is the refresh rate uh, refresh rate is the number of times a display's image is repainted or refreshed per second the refresh rate is expressed in hertz so a refresh rate of 60 hertz means the image is refreshed 60 times in a second a faster refresh rate is very important for gaming applications and nice to have for most other applications the result is you will get smoother scrolling with no tails and faster response for games Similarly there is something called response time a uh, response time is used to indicate how fast the monitor transition the image from one to next response time is measured in milliseconds with a shorter response time being an indication of good and faster monitor short response time is especially great for fast paced action gaming as it will ensure the sharpest picture and prevent image ghosting uh now comes the screen type There are screen types like uh, it's a flat or a curved screen. 
Uh, curved monitors are relatively new technology, but they are quickly overtaking flat monitors among discerning users. Both have their own pros and cons. I mean, while curved monitors have a good viewing experience and less distortion on them, on the other hand, it also might have issues with wall mounting and it's prone to glare at certain view angles. And the final is the resolution. Resolution is the number of horizontal and vertical pixels on a display screen. More pixels and higher resolution add up to an extremely rich and immersive experience. You must have noticed while viewing a video on YouTube, what uh, 1080p, uh, 720p, that's how the resolution also looks for the monitor. There are definitely various other buying criteria as well and different features which is covered in the next slide. But before that, I am going to show what were my buying criteria out of all these factors. So the overall purpose for me was, uh, it, it was an, uh, you know, a mix of both gaming, video editing. So I was looking for uh, somewhere of uh, an all-rounder sort of thing that can help me in both gaming and video editing as well as in my office work. My budget was definitely less than 20k. I was not willing to spend more than 20k for buying a monitor at this point of time. In terms of panel, since I wanted to do video editing stuff, uh, I wanted to go for an IPS panel which actually displays the true color quality. Again, uh, in terms of aspect ratio, my preferred aspect ratio was 21 ratio 9. I was looking for an ultra wide monitor as you have seen. I purchased that and that's the reason I went for an ultra wide of 21 ratio 9. Moving to the screen size, uh, my preferable screen size was somewhere around 27 to 32 inch and I ended up buying the 29 inch LG monitor. Refresh rate, uh, I, I was not a hardcore gamer at this point of time so I didn't mat it didn't matter if I had to go for a higher refresh rate of 144 uh, but I was more or less satisfied with a somewhere refresh rate of 75 hertz. Most important thing which we have to keep in mind that there are high-end configurations as well but that all will completely vary with your budget since my budget was less than 20k I had to compromise on few things and refresh rate and response time were definitely one of them. So yeah, response time was a standard response time of around 5 millisecond. Uh, screen type was, uh, I went for a flat monitor although I wanted a curved one but because of the most important factor of budget I had to constrain most of the other parameters and that's why I went for a flat monitor. Same goes with the resolution. I ended up with a resolution of 1080p and that's what I thought would be a standard one to go ahead with. This were definitely the, a good buying guide if you are especially planning to buy a monitor in 2021. Apart from this, there are a few other factors or, or features that you can consider while looking into it. So most important are ergonomics. Uh, is the monitor height adjustment? How? What, to, what angle it can be tilted. So these days uh, definitely we are focusing on ergonomics and most of the monitors are coming up with height adjustment and this could be one of the factors and features for anyone who is planning to buy a monitor. Uh, moving to is the speaker. Many of these monitors are coming up with an extended speaker. Uh, I was uh, So in this case LG has that extended external uh, speaker of 5 watt. So it has an inbuilt speaker which I will be showcasing in, in upcoming minutes. Brightness is another factor uh, which uh, people are considering these days along with the ports. Uh, there are various different ports which are available right now. It's a VGA, HDMI, Type-C. Most of the MacBooks has a Type-C. So people are wanting a Type-C uh, port in the monitors as well. And at the end, the brand preference. Uh, brand preference is all about you know what brand you want to go with is it LG, Samsung, Dell uh, you know so people are more inclined toward the brand and they might keep their uh, brand preference while buying a monitor. So with this I think that gives a complete 
rest of what should be a buying guide of a monitor in 2021. Let's move in, unbox our monitor and see what are accessories I've got. So here we go. A few moments later. Okay, sorry. Okay, let's see what all we got so far. I see this is a power adapter. Cool, let's keep it aside. Okay, this is a HDMI cable. And along with it, okay, this is the stand which we're gonna use it. What else we got? Okay, this is a stand holder again. I really wanted the silver color, but uh, since I didn't got it I went for the black color so and this is the table top of it I'm gonna open it and see how does it look let me keep it aside and we have got some manuals or CD play really do we use CD till today and some screw bolts Let's keep it aside and there is our monitor. Keep it carefully. I will keep the box aside. Just open it for you guys. So, wow, well, this is the first look. This is how it looks like. Let me quickly assemble this for you and we'll start it and see. We talk about few of the ports here. I think we are here, we have got two HDMI one output for headphones and one power cable this don't have the type c so which is uh, not a good thing i was i could have read the description properly because i also use a macbook so for that it would have been easy if i've got a direct type c Hey, welcome again. So it's been two weeks I've been using this monitor and the experience has been amazing. I won't be going through the each and every features again because I've already covered that in the buying guide and the buying criteria. What I will be focusing right now is on the overall experience what I had by using this monitor for just two weeks. So I have been using this monitor for a couple of reasons. Number one, uh, mainly the office stuff. Number two, video editing. Number three, watching movies. And number four, gaming. So let's see how is my experience of using this monitor. But first thing first, uh, whenever you get a new monitor, number one thing which I would recommend is test the monitor if it's working fine or not. And how to do it? Let me show it right over here. So simply go to Google and type monitor test and there's a link of Ezio monitor test. Click on that and there are a couple of tests which needs to be done. It will take you hardly two minutes and almost there are 13 tests that will see, you know, if there are any defects in pixels in this monitor and you will easily get to know about it. Uh, so yeah, I think just use it and 
uh, once you are sure that hey this monitor is good to go you can definitely use it uh, talking about my experience of video editing so you can see that how it looks uh, whenever i op uh, do some video editing stuff there is a wide time span in terms of gaming uh, you can see the experience is amazing uh, take a see sometimes i do also binge watch a couple of series and one of the latest movie which i was watched i watched recently was to fun let's talk about few of the buttons this monitor has got so this monitor has just got a single button which is right below the lg logo in the center of it uh, this helps in controlling all the picture mode brightness uh, volume and all so if you just simply double click you will uh, it will appear a option where you can select settings in the settings there is a picture mode uh, there are a couple of picture modes like custom vivid sdr effect reader mode one of the best part which i really like about the picture mode was the color weakness what does this mean that if any user has a uh, issue with their sightness this particular uh, mode can help up to a bit extent uh, talking about few of the other settings uh, with the help of this uh, particular you can even control the volume and you don't have to go this far you can just slide right uh, or left uh, from in the beginning and it will change the volume a uh, few other things about this this monitor can be tilted by 15 degrees uh, this is how it looks so that makes a good viewing experience for the uh, user who is using this monitor so that was all a good points about this monitor few small things which i really didn't like or I wish I it could have was number one is the height adjustment so nowadays most of the monitor is coming up with a height adjustment I wish this monitor would also have come but uh, it's fine uh, this monitor don't have any height adjustment and second part is this monitor slightly wobbles what does that mean that if you uh, you know try to slide it or try to touch the edges of the monitor it wobbles a bit so that's a small another point which I didn't like about this monitor. Overall, it has been super experience uh, so far. I've been using this for almost two weeks now. So that's it guys. This is my first tech review on the LG monitor, uh, LG ultra wide monitor. And do let me know in comments, how do you find this video? Was it useful, not useful? So we covered a lot of things in this video, starting from unboxing it, to uh, you know uh, looking at the buying criteria and number three my experience of using it for last two weeks do let me know in comment uh, what are the few other tech reviews you would like to see and until then see you all next time